Welcome back friends. In this uh, small video we will be talking about Bacteriorhodopsin. Now I have seen pretty many questions uh, coming from this Bacteriorhodopsin part in CSI and NET. So what is Bacteriorhodopsin? Now as the term suggests, it's a rhodopsin protein of bacterial origin. That's why it's termed as Bacteriorhodopsin. Now this is a heat stable and obviously a protein that changes its structure depending upon the light wavelength. Right, so that's the property. Major two properties of bacterial rhodopsin. One is that it is a protein, protein that is one light sensitive, and second thing, heat stable. These two are the major property of bacterial rhodopsin protein. This protein usually found onto the membrane surface of bacterial cells. Now the example of one bacteria having bacterial rhodopsin is Halobacterium Halobacterium Selenarium I think Selenarium will be the actual thing. So this is the example of a bacteria which is having this bacterial rhodopsin as a light sensitive protein onto their membrane surface. <clears throat> now the unique property of a bacterial rhodopsin is it can it is very much sensitive to light and the wavelength of light. When it receives a particular light wavelength, it changes its structure. And then in another wavelength, it changes it this structure into something else. So it ha is having an array of different structures. And those structures are modified depending upon the type of wavelength of life that is getting. Okay, so that is a very important point. Now, as suppose uh, depending upon getting a green light, it changes its structure into something else. Now, when it gets the blue light, it changes the structure into something else. So, depending upon this different wa wavelength of light, it can change the structure. And as it is changing the structure, placing onto the membrane, it can actually change the chemical conductivity, right? It can change the electrostatic conductivity of that membrane or of the cell. So, it can lead up to the chemical or photochemical change. That means the change in chemical way occurred due to any light introduction. That's called the photochemical change. So it is behaving like a photochemical cell inside a bacteria. That is very, very important. So they behave like the semiconductors because semiconductors do the same. They get the energy, changes its structure in different energy barriers. And so uh, we can use semiconductors. So in this case also we can use bacterial rhodopsin as semiconductors for our living world. We can also use them for our optical purpose or photochemical change. Okay. So, what are the different? So, this is the major part that is, they are behaving, they are bringing photochemical change and optical as well as electrical conductor. That is the use of bacterial rhodopsin. So now let's look at the structure of bacterial rhodopsin. If we begin with the cycle of bacterial rhodopsin. So we'll be talking here about the bacterial rhodopsin light cycle. Depending upon the type of wavelength they are getting, the structure modification occurs. And how it is occurring, let's look at here. So let's say this is the beginning, the actual structure of bacterial rhodopsin. And it moves through a cycle of different changes in the structure and then finally came back to the normal structure again. How? So at very beginning, it receives, if it receives the green light, so green light, when it receives the green light here, it changes its structure to called a K form. Okay. Now this K form. Now after bringing to the K form, so it is kind of excited by getting the green light, changes its structure into K form. Now from the K form, then it relaxes into another form which is completely, each of these structures are representing different structure. K form is a different, M form is a different, O form is a different structure. So it is first getting excited to K form, then it is relaxed, it is getting relaxed to M form. 
So normal, this is a relaxation stage. So I am just drawing in black relaxation. So this is relaxation. Then from M form, it is further relaxes into O form. So this is another relaxation stage. After that, it can get red light. So when it gets the red light here, so longer wavelength, right? Red light. It then brings to the P form. So this is in the P form after getting the red light. Further excitement. Now from this P form, it again relaxes. It relaxes to Q form. So this is again relax, relaxing into the Q form. Now once they are at the relaxation stage as Q form, then they finally receives the light, which is blue light. When it gets the blue light, it finally converted into the actual structure of bacterial rhodopsin, which is BR. Okay, which is BR after blue light. So that's the whole cycle of bacterial rhodopsin. This is called the light cycle of bacterial rhodopsin. Sometimes Q cycle of bacterial rhodopsin because these are the different stages that bacterial rhodopsin protein can go on. So you can see we can have a huge window for this protein to be excited and then to be relaxed. But during this time, it can change its structural course. So we can use this feature to use them as a semiconductors, as a different kind of photochemical change inducing agents in biological organisms. In future, we can use this bacteriodopsin or biology origin of this kind of conductors in our purposes. So this is a very important region of research. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.